Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 19. With me, Mr. Sealy P. It's Tuesday the 8th of December. We have new mods. We have some updates. I apologise for the lateness of this video being posted, as I mentioned in yesterday's mod review and in my Let's Play. Uh, where I'm staying at the moment, we've had no power all day. It went off this morning, just after 9. Didn't come back on till just after 4. So I'm I'm posting this as quickly as I can. Uh, plus, our Wi-Fi isn't great, so it's going to take quite a while to actually upload. So I, again, I apologise for the lateness. If you have been hanging on waiting for my mod review, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. Um, I know that quite a few people do mod reviews, so I do appreciate it. Uh, the updates are as follows. So from top left, Starowees by Xylac04, the map. Uh, modular BGA system by Caster DSA. The Case IH Puma CVX165 by STV Modding. The Flegel VFW18000 by STV Modding Fabian and Gogo Bear. Next row down from the left, the New Holland 120 car by JA Modding. The Lizard Poplar Cutter by GeForce Modding. The Vintage Diner by GeForce Modding. The Flegel VFW14000 by Plugs LS. And Seasons by Realismus Modding have all had updates today. So, in front of me, I have got the Krone Comprima F155XC. This is by, by ARM Team. 8.26 megabytes download, 13 slots on console for each. Um, and I say each because if you've got the add on straw harvest DLC, there are two options available. We've got a standard baler option, which will bale exactly the same as a normal baler does, just using this platform. Or there's the option here where you can load your own net. Uh, so that's what we're going to have a look at. Well, both of those. And also with this one, the add-on straw harvest one, we do have the option to change the bale size as well. So we'll have a look at that. Two, nicely made mods, nicely detailed. There are a few options available with regards to colour choices, tyre options and those kind of things. These you will find under tools and baling technology. So there we go. We have the Comprima F155 XC. 60,000 to buy, requires 70 horsepower. Uh, as I've already said, 13 slots. Now this first one is the one that if you've got the add-on straw harvest, it does say a baler turns loose straw, grass or hay into convenient bales. The baler to function correctly requires the add-on straw harvest mod. That's the first one. The second one is the one that is just a standard one. Now I don't know if those are both going to pop up if you haven't got the add-on straw harvest. They probably will do. So I've got one of each. Options available. We can change the main colour to anything out of those three. We can change the rim colour to anything on that palette, like so. Now on the one for the add-on straw harvest, we've got fill twine manually or fill twine automatically. Now automatically you don't need pallets. When the twine runs out, it automatically puts a new one in. Um, if you want to do it manually, then you have to get the pallets of twine, which are available in the mod tub store once you've got the um or say in the game store once you've got the add-on straw harvest installed and then we go on to wheel setup so we've got the 550r17 singles uh 55r20 singles then we've got the 50r17 tandem and the 50r20 tandem and then back to the single again those are the options the options on the regular one are the same with colour and rim colour, the only difference is you don't have the, op have the option for automatic or manual twine. Um, now, if you're not sure about the twine, if you've got the add-on straw harvest on, you'll find that under pallets. And you should have, for these, uh, for the add-on straw harvest ones, you've got molasses, bale net and bale twine. Now, it's same twine, but the picture shows that one, like the rolls. So I've got a bale net pallet. Twine is usually for square bales, net is for round bales. So that should be the pallet you should want or need, unless you pick the automatic loading one. So what I'm going to do, oh, I have got a tractor here. I'm going to be leaving my help window open, um, as I said before, because I'm away, I haven't got my side panel with me. 
Uh, someone was concerned the other day because I said I hadn't got my side panel, that it doesn't work. It does work on PS5, it works on PS4, um, it does work on PS5 as well. I just haven't got it with me. So, at the moment, if I do L1, I can close the bayonet door, which closes that front section. It's difficult to see, isn't it, that angle? If I do it again, L1, an open bayonet door, that's empty at the moment. If I back up, it says refill baler. If I press L3, it puts a couple of rolls on there, and then we're good to go. But when that runs out, I'll need to refill again, if you go for this option. Like I say, don't have to. Uh, but then we've also got on L1, if I go down on my D-pad, it says switch current bail size, 1.3, 1.55, 1 1.8, 1 1. I think it's supposed to start on 1.11. I might have caught it with my finger. So 1.1, 1 .1, 1.3, 1.55 and 1.8. So what we'll do is we want at 1.1. I'm going to close the net door, like so. There are a few mods today. I'm going to try and get through them as quickly as possible. We've got some really interesting ones. Quite a bit of John Deere stuff, but there is other stuff as well, not just John Deere. So turn the baler on, drop that down. Pretty sure it's only does a 3,000 litre bale, doesn't it? On the smaller one. I don't know. Three and a half. So 3,500 litre bale. If you have it on the 1.1. Like so. I close that. And I switch that then to a 1.3. Just realised, am I not going to have enough grass for the other baler? The other baler will do 4,000 litre bale standard. I'm not quite sure I'm going to have enough grass for all of them. I thought I'd cut enough. So we go, 4,000 litres on that one. Come on, like so. They do look smaller, but that's 4,000. Uh, then I can change that to the one point. Five, five. Just close the door. One point five five. I've missed my line completely. That would explain it. So I'm assuming this is going to be a four and a half, and the one point eight should be a six. Is it? I'm going to run out of grass. Oh no, it's a 5,000. Now I'm going to extrapolate from that. The 1.8 is going to be a 6,000 litre. I haven't got enough grass left. Uh, but there, so, so there you go. The standard one, the one that isn't part of the add-on straw harvest, will do a 4,000 litre bale, like all the round balers do. If you get the add-on straw har harvest version, you've then got these various different bale sizes you can go with. So that's the first of the mods. That's the Comprima F155XC, and that's by ARM Team. Moving on from there, I hope we're in the right place, kind of. We've got, let's start with this one, I think. This is the Reich RT160. This is by Agrotechnic Nord Eiffel. 12.94 megabytes of download, 12 slots on console, and there are quite a few options available on this one. We've got a grain or crop carrying version a couple of different sizes in that we've got a couple of different bale loading versions and there's also an animal transport one and if they're still in here which they should be there should be some horses in there because we do have um, a stable to look at later so i'm going to take the horses over to that very nicely made as they always are agrotechnic nor die for they do some really lovely mods attention to detail was usually very very high on theirs Now, with this one, it does have straps, but the straps, as you can see, sit underneath because I did it from in-cab when I bought it out with the tractor and I couldn't work out where the straps were. The clips are there, but I think they're just running underneath. But when you put bales on, the straps will go over the bales. Uh, but these sides don't fold up on this one. I thought they would, 
but they just stay like that as a bail loading option. They do have trailer hitches, and I bought all three of these trailers out together in a row because it just made life a little bit easier. So these you will find under tools, under trailers. There you go, the Reich RT160. Our options available, we can change the main colour to any one of those four, like so. We've got a capacity at 16,000 litres, 18,000 litres, animal transport, which puts that ramp section on the back. We've got bail loading wagon like that, with no sides on, or bail loading wagon like that, with those side flaps but I haven't been able to find an option to fold those back up then at the front we've got trailer type attached type sorry trailer and then trailer low so depend on what you're actually pulling it with you might want to adjust that you don't always have to uh, what I'm going to do though is switch that back one so we can see the tires then we've got an option of T404 tread or a ride max FL 693 M those are the two different options so a few different choices to go with this will hold pretty much everything 16 or 18 thousand liters bail transport and then we've got the one there that's got some horses in which i'm going to take over in a minute and we'll see that well we'll unload the horses of course we will uh so there you go that's the reich rt160 by agrotechnic nordifel actually you know what it should do I don't always fill them up. We do have the option on this one. Uh, this one will do tip side left, tip side right, grain door, and tip side back. So a few different options available. Nice smooth animation. We'll see the unload of the other uh, one. But what I am going to do is leave that to do its thing. I'm going to hook up to the bale one simply to show you that it's... Um, on my options open at the top left if I do L1 just gives me toggle map size R1 stop engine fasten and unfasten tension belts L1 and R1 unload here which I think is just a leftover from the other versions there's nothing that gives me the option to close those side panels up so I think it just gets transported like that there you go so next up we have got the Lizard NS900H, this is also a trailer, this is 7.81 megabytes download, 8 slots on console, and this is by Agro Sketch. Now this is one of those ones, it's why I always mention it, there are a couple of options available, well a few options available in different sizes. I've gone for the largest capacity, which I think is 20,000 litres. When you get to 20,000 litres, it is then only for forage crops, it will only take things like grass, hay, straw, I think it does manure, a couple other ones, we will do double check that, but the standard one will take pretty much everything. Again, very nicely made, nicely detailed. There's only tip side rear, there's not a grain door, though it's got the grain door option. Oh, no, I'm going to say that, and you know what's going to happen now, it's going to be on there, isn't it? But um, I tried to sort out the uh, horses with it. No. So R1, it's not giving me the option for any other, it's just tip side back, there's no tip side grain door. L1, R1 and unload here will tip like so, and there's no left or right tip or anything like that. If we look at it in store, this is also under tools and trailers. There we go. 8,999 for the base model. It will take pretty much everything in its basic configuration. So like that, at 11,000 litres, we can change the main colour which is the chassis underneath the rim color also to anything on that palette like so we can change the design color which changes the body Actually, i should have done that a different color so it stands out from the chassis there we go and then we can change the capacity so we've got 11,000 liters that will take all crop types 13,000 will also do all crop types 17,000 i didn't check with those sides on i would I think that would still do all crop types. It's only when you get to the 20,000 litre one. Normally the largest one with bale, with them um, silage boards will only take silage crops, but potentially the 17 might not either. So just be wary of that. Uh, Will Brand, we've got Lizard, we've got Trelleborg, and back again. Under the Trelleborgs, we've got a wide tyre. The Lizards, we've got a twin tyre set up there. 
and then design we've got standard or with warning decals then you've got fenders fenders and warning decals and then back to standard again so decals fenders fenders and warning and off again now weirdly when i first came in to buy this and um, the one i've got that i just showed you i couldn't get it to go onto the design i was going to say to you the menu won't let me and this time it bounced straight onto it uh, i don't know why it did it but it did so what we'll do is just whisk right over to the uh the filling station so like i say if you've got it in a 20,000 litre capacity because it's not just the standard forage i think because it does manure as well start filling so we'll do chaff sugarcane hay grass yeah manure straw silage wood chips so i'm pretty sure normally the forage crops does that normally include manure it probably does now there's me saying it takes manure and everyone's saying they always do um potentially yes so there we go that's the lizard ns 900 h by agro sketch moving on we've got this handy device this is the linear distributor this is 3.11 megabytes to download six slots on console this is by shardy this is designed to go with slurry spreaders slurry or um, digestate spreaders so a lot of these tanks and tankers that have an attachment for the um, the drag hoses the drip feeders the injectors they don't always have themselves have any way of distributing slurry other than using those injectors and things your general slurry spreaders will often have one of these or variations of or various different attachments so this this mod is just this this is the linear distributor so you can buy this and any of these tankers or any of the modded ones that have that attachment on the back for those fittings that one can hook on with its pipe and it will spread uh, it spreads out to 14.8 meters i think that's what i wrote down so i'm hoping that's going to be correct nicely detailed it's the samson colors i don't think there's any other options i think you get it as that and it will hook up directly and the hose will hook up you'll find this now i don't was it under slurry tanks i think it might have been under miscellaneous but i'll just double check i oh, know so at the end there you go the linear distributor so under slurry tanks all the equipment within there 10,950 yeah 14.8 meters it will spread out to and there are no options available you get it like so what we'll do i grabbed one of these just for this very thing so as you can see the pipe that's hanging over it when you get it attaches you've got your distributor on the back and away we go 14 a 14.8 meters of lovely slurry look at that lovely shine on the ground that's a nice bit of kit that certainly a lot cheaper than getting some of the other you know the drip feeders and the injectors and those kind of things makes a few more of these tankers a bit more versatile very cool indeed i need to just detach that one why is that not attaching Oh, there we go. Next up, we have got this. This is the Joskin Tornado 3. This is 6.05 megabytes download, six slots on console. This is by Mephew FS. Now, we've had a few, I'm pretty sure on FS, was it 15 and 17, we had Tornadoes standard. But do we have the Tornado 2? I'm trying to think if we've already had a modded one of these or not on 17. But as standard under manure spreaders is where you'll find it we've got the samson ones and the company that shall not be named as standard now we've had a couple of tornadoes i know we have as mods but you'll find it at the end there uh 49 000 to buy requires 130 horsepower this will spread at 15 miles per hour and it will run at 11 <laughs> it will spread at 15 meters but run at 11 miles per hour that's better it will hold 19,000 litres. We can change the rim colour to yellow. So we have the Joskin yellow or back to grey. Then we've got the optional trailer board, Michelin, 
mitres and back again and each of these we've got standard or inverted tread so there's no wide tread we've got standard or inverted tread on each of them so if we go to michelin standard and inverted and then mitres standard and inverted those are our options so what we'll do is open the back up like so l1 and x opens the back do like a little bit of bulge in the tyres. Is that another one of those things on FS17? Everyone, everyone got really excited when FS19 was due out, and everyone was saying, apparently we're going to get you know the the tyre. Um, what's the word for it? I can't remember now. And everyone said, oh, it'd be amazing if we get it. It's another one of those features we kind of ignore in a way now. We take it for granted that we have it. Or was that 15 to 17? I'm sure it was 17 to 19. Deformation, tyre deformation. That's what it is. You get that bulge and stuff when things get laid and down and heavier. But that's pretty nice. So we go. That's the Joskin Tornado 3 by Matthew FS. Moving on, we have got this. This is a corker. I've said before, I'm not particularly a massive John Deere fan I like all machinery I like stuff but this sounds great there's a load of options it's just nice this is the John Deere 8760 to 8960 by seed modding 10.16 megabytes download 14 slots on console the horsepower isn't that big on it actually but it's a big old unit quite a few options on this as well trailer hitches PTOs three-point links as you can see big old LSWs but there's a whole variety this one is an Australian spec we have a US spec we've got Australian spec absolutely brilliant looks great sounds even better but we'll get onto that in a minute this you'll find under vehicles and large tractors there you go. Not too expensive either, the 8960. 370 horsepower is the maximum it will go to. So not huge horsepower, but it's got a bit of grunt, a bit of torque to it. Uh, 19 mile an hour top speed. 14 slots, as I've already said. Options available. Now, this is where things get a bit more interesting. The price at the moment says 99999 But the previous screen said it was a lot cheaper. Well, if we go on to main colour, we can have new, used one or used two. If you go on either of the used ones, the price drops right down. So you're getting a used version. But then we've got design colors. So this is actually different parts of the tractor. So at the moment, parts of it, the roof haven't and the front section, see the front section on the engine there, and on the roof is still the other. So if we now go to design color, and I put that on used one as well, all the color then matches up. And the price is right down now at 70,157 for that beast. Now that's saying 370 horsepower already, but I'm pretty sure that's not right. We'll just zoom out a little bit. Um, fuel tanks. We've got a standard fuel tank, but we can have an extra fuel tank at the back there. Added in two if you want extra fuel, if you're doing a particularly long journey. Then we've got Wilbrand, Trelleborg, Michelin, Mitus, and back again. Under Trelleborg, we've got TM800 Jules with rear weight, all weights all round. Then we've got TM900, uh, 710 Jules, again, rear weight, weights all round. Then we go to the TM600 Triples, rear weight, weights all round. And then back, oh no, let me go small ones, TM600 jewels. Again, rear weight, front weight, then the TM900 singles. So you can have singles on that. I said LSWs, it's, you know, it's just the, the big chunky tyres. And then we're back to what we started with the TM800s. Under Trelleborg, uh, under Michelin, we've got the 800 R38 jewels. Again, rear weight, front weight. Then we go to a slightly smaller 710, rear weight, front weight. TM600 triples, again, rear weight, front weight. TM600 jewels, jewels with weight, rear and front. Then 900 singles, and then back to jewels again. 
under mitres, we've got the same options, jewels, rear, front, and we go through the options, but then when we get onto the TM900s, like so, we've then also got the TM1250s, which is what I think I went for, because I thought it looked cool. Then design, and this is on the exhaust stack, so we've got standard black, then we can have standard bronze, so the top section is bronze, standard silver with flap, silver pipe straight through all the way up, and back to standard black again. Then we've got the option of attaches, and this is where all things get a bit more interesting on the back as well. We've got a standard trailer hitch attach on the back. We can have with PTO. We can have three-point hitch, which keeps the PTO, but adds a three-point hitch as well. Back to standard, so I'll leave all that on. Then version, standard, like so. Then we go to the US version, which adds those indicator stalks on, like that. Then we go to the standard Aussie version, which takes those stalks off but puts oversize on there. And then the Aussie extended version, which then puts the stalks on as well as the oversize on the front too. Then back to standard. Then we've got windows, regular or dark tint level one. Engine setup, the 8760 is 300 horsepower, so that's your standard. Then the 8960 is 370, so 370 is the maximum you can go. And then we've got the Green Star 300, no standard or standard 2. So if you want the um, GPS system unit on the top, again, it's aesthetic on console. It doesn't serve a purpose. We don't have GPS, but it's on there. And then we've got the option of additional front lights. Yes or no. Like so. So quite a few options. I think I went with the Australian version 2. Extra front lights. Everything on the back. PTO, three-point link. <laughs> I just love the sound of that. I think it sounds brilliant. Uh, we do have an option to open and close the door, like so, horn, lights, nice light options on that, especially around the back, if you're working at night, that's brilliant. In cab, first person mode, however you want to refer to it. Really nicely detailed inside. I like it a lot. Very cool indeed. Right. Just sounds brilliant. Could listen to that all day long so there we go that's the john deere 8760 8960 by seed modding which brings me on to the next of the mods very neatly uh this is the i want to get this right the jd1113 this is by eric isaac adriano avancio and agro mods this is 20.12 megabytes of download 14 slots on console this is a direct drill as well, but this is actually two of them in sections. Now, when I saw this immediately, I thought, hang on a minute, didn't we already have the New Holland and Case version of this already? It looks very much like that. And then I started to think, was this by the same modders? But this has got a few changes because this has also got the Tandem. I'm pretty sure it is. This is just the John Deere version of the ones we had already, but... I think they might have had an update. They had a few little problems when you had hooked them up together. They shifted around and bumped against each other and caused all sorts of problems. This doesn't. This hasn't, as far as I can tell. Bringing it down here. So, yeah, as I say, it, it didn't seem to shift, move around or do anything. Really nicely detailed. The options available, I think, are what make that better now. So that join in the middle doesn't cause too many problems. 
Uh, so like I said, the cedar itself is 14 slots, and obviously you might need to get two of them, but once you bought the first one, the slot count drops down. The tandem was only one, I'm sure it was one slot, I wrote down one. I hope that wasn't 11. But you don't have to have that, you can just run one of these. Each one is 7.5? I think 7.5 so this will be running at 15 meters if you run two together but again you don't have to if you don't want to this you will find under planters there you go six eight thousand this is a direct drill as well it would do seed and fertilizer 170 horsepower yeah 7.5 meters so two of them together will be 15 and it does your regular planting crop types it does it's not one of the ones that does everything um but is a direct drill which makes life rather handy options available now this is what i mean at the moment we've got ladders at either end and we've got the um uh it, it comes standard with ridge markers and it has a ladder at either end so if you get it on its own like that 7.5 meters ridge markers if you want to run them that's great but what we can do is change that so if i go from standard and go right extension it leaves the ladder on the left and takes the ladder on the right off and the ridge markers away so if i'm going to put two of these together i want one at right extension and the other one at left extension because then that one takes off the left ladder and also the ridge markers which means with the left extension and right extension together the ladders are on the two outsides and where there are no ladders it joins in the middle so that way you don't have that problem i think whereas before when the first ones come out the ladders were knocking together and those kind of things so those are the options so if you want to put two together you want a left extension and a right extension and it should hook up absolutely perfectly i'm going to use that because why not now as you can imagine if you are in operate this independently you know, the options are still pretty much the same when we hook it up we have got 3,400 litres of seed, 2,000 litres of, uh, 3,400 litres of fertiliser, 2,000 litres of seed. So each one on its own will hold 1,000 litres of seed and 1,700 litres of fertiliser. But then you combine them and you get this big old setup like so. Now if it's like the other one was before, I'm pretty sure you can run different crops on each one if you wanted to you can raise and lower them independently if you wanted to i'm just going to hire a worker because i'm going to drop that down all together and off we go across the field like so but i'm pretty sure i can lower there you go so i lower that one down bring it back up again press my tool button i can drop that one down so i can run one or the other and I'm pretty sure I can, um, as I did with the other one, I wasn't sure if I could and it did work, that you could run two different strips of crops if you wanted to. Again, I'm not quite sure why you would want to. So there you go. I, I like the fact it gives you the option to have the smaller version, but to hook two together and you can get the much wider one. Because I know a lot of people are looking for wider cedars and planters and stuff all the time, but it also then caters to people that are somewhere in the middle and don't necessarily want a massive one, but you know can go for the 7.5 meters but that's really nicely detailed it works well there was no jostling or moving around like i say the detail on it is brilliant nice nice mod that now obviously with extended use you might find issues or problems i haven't so far um but there you go so that's the john deere 1113 that's by eric isaac adriano avancio and agro mods moving on from there we have got this this is the millennial farm silo and i know a lot of people have been waiting for this this is by the subby and this is extra it's exactly like um zach johnson's silo on millennial farms it's brilliant the attention to detail is incredible now this was the one obviously from the millennial farms map which unfortunately as it stands at the moment is not coming to console but there are some nice options on this now the the complete and total control of all the options on this that i think they were hoping for haven't come to fruition but bearing in mind we're, we're on console there are still some really nice options available on this now as it stands at the moment if i drive up to this with my lorry with something in it and i've gone for the belly dump one just because it kind of works 
nicely for this because that's what they use on the actual farm nothing will happen if i drive up it wasn't won't give me any option to do anything so i've got quite a bit of control here and if i come over it says start stop silo unload if i go across a little bit it says start stop auger now if i want to go for more of a millennial farms feel I can leave it like that and when I bring my lorry over or if I want to do it now I go and press the auger one because the auger turns on the pit augers and it will when you unload it will put them into the silos so if you want to unload into here you need the auger one to be put on first when you want to take out of the silo you want to put on the start stop silo unload now each of these will only last for 60 seconds then turn themselves off again. So if you don't, if I turn it on now and then muck around and get into my lorry and bring it over, it could turn off. So what I'm going to do is bring this over. Open the cover. And as you'll see when I go over this, nothing will happen. It doesn't give me any option to unload anything. I've got nothing come up to unload. I'll leave the engine running. And if I go to this one here, it starts stop auger. It turns on. When I get back in here, it should now say unload. There we go. So I start overloading. So I can put my corn in, but I have to have the pit auger on for that to work. There is another option. We'll get to that in a minute. Don't worry. If you think this is going to be a bit too fiddly, doesn't matter. There's another option. Okay. Now after 60 seconds, that pit auger will shut off automatically. So it'll take, obviously, 60 seconds, but it will unload. While we're doing that, we'll have a look around and look at the detail, and it is absolutely brilliant. Pretty sure we can go up. Here we can. Up on top of the bins, if we want to go on top of the bins. We've got the ladders on the various different ones. Now, what we have also got is the auger for loading up trailers. There's one here. That's turned off now. And there is one round the side here. Now there are there is a third one. The third one doesn't work, but this one does here. So if you want to take anything out of the silos, you can take it out from the front one or that side one. And I'm going to show you that now. So when it comes to unloading or taking out of the silo, I go to this one here and press start stop silo unload. Press circle. Comes on. The green light comes on there. And what I'll have now is it will say start filling. So what I can do now is press L3, corn 30,000, and I can start doing that. Now what I could do is unload and load at the same time if I wanted to, which would seem a bit weird. If I drive around the other side, and I need to do this within 60 seconds, otherwise that's going to turn off. This auger around here will also let me take out the silo. There we go, start filling. But the other one won't. So there is one more and it won't. I did try it. But that, I mean, again, it's still, it's really nice to have those options. That one doesn't come up with start filling. But that's absolutely fine. So that's if I want to do it in a more kind of Millennial Farms style. If I want to go down that route. If that's not your cup of tea and you want it to operate just like a regular silo. That should have turned off now. Yeah, see the green light's gone off here on the unload section there. If I go into the building here. And this is, I think, designed a little bit more for PC because it says there CP mode. Um, and that's course play, I think it is. So if you've got course play or you've got workers on a route that are coming over to it and you don't want to have to be turning them on and off, you want it to just be able to unload naturally. If I now press CP mode on, you hear that little bit of music. That little box there lights up, says CP mode. If I come over to here, just above here, that says CP mode, that's lit up. This now will act like any other silo in game. I can unload into it. I can unload out of it without having to mess around pressing buttons. So what will happen now is, as I come over, you notice I can unload into it. It says start filling automatically so I can unload out of it as well. And I haven't had to press any buttons on that control board. So if you want it to act as a regular silo, you just press that CP button inside the building there. Once that light's come on, now that will stay on like that until you turn it off. 
So you've got two options then, you can go for the more millennial farmer feel, or you can go for a standard silo feel, whichever you'd rather with that. Now this you will find under placeables, I hope that makes sense, I hope, I hope I explained it properly. That is how it works, it's just, you know. So there we go, the millennial farm silo, 350 grand, but it holds 950,000 litres. Regular crop types, it's not a multi-fruit silo. Um, but 950,000 litres is not to be sniffed at. And I like the options on there. So like I said, if you are trying to recreate that fill, it works really, really nicely. Very cool indeed. Right, I've got to hurry up because we've got a couple more to look at and the next one after this is amazing. Well, I think it is anyway. This is the modern Polish state. Sorry, that last one was by the subby. And that was, sorry, 20 slots. Did I even say, did I even, did I even do that one properly? 25.13 megabytes of download and 20 slots on console. Sorry. I just got excited. It happens. So, the modern Polish stable we've got next. 8.18 megabytes of download. Um, this is by Pavelk20. 11 slots on console. It will hold four horses. So, if you're preparing for an apocalypse or something, you should be absolutely fine. We've got the barn building here. Doors open and close. Please open and close like so we've got one at either end so you can drive right the way through and one at the side if you should choose to use it we do have a light switch there for putting your bedding in that's here and i found because it was over to one side a left tip trailer worked way better i tried to do it with the rear tip and it i couldn't get the trigger to come up so a left tip trailer works far better or right tip depending on which way you drive into it um, so a left or right tip trailer works very well there Water trough is around the sides here. Feed trough for your oats and your hay is just here. And your dialogue box is this one here for loading, unloading. Please don't... Wow, that was incredible. Bear with me just a second. So, this is the trailer from earlier. The Reich 160. And this is it in its animal configuration. It does say in the menu when you choose um, the trailer, it will tell you how many animals it will do or not do. L1 and X opens the back. Unfolds it like so. And I can put my horses in. Just to show that everything works as it should. The trailer and the buy, sell, load, or unload. Now, I want to say as well on this, if people are still having trouble, I still get a lot of comments people saying they cannot get any of their animal triggers to work they can't get any of the animal system to work the animal pens won't work they can't place them they can't get dialogue boxes if you have the factory mod installed the factory mod at the moment is is or has been known to cause problems with the animal system and animal pen system so if you have it installed you might not even have it particularly for that map it can cause problems so my advice is uninstall it try it if everything works again it could be that's causing you some problems um, but there you go. I mean, it's nicely made. It only takes four horses, but it's a nice size. We have one, the small one, and I did two as well. Uh, but that's by Pavelk20, which brings me on to the last of the mods for today. And as I always say when I do mod reviews, I like something a little bit different. And this is definitely that. This is the John Deere 8000 container carrier. And I thought, okay, what's well, another hook lift, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no. This is a forage harvester. With a hook lift attachment, as you can see, the back wheels are missing. We've got this attachment section with a container carrier on the back. So any IT runner backs that will hold grain or whatever you want to put in them can be lifted up and put onto it. It's, it's brilliant. That may not be your cup of tea. You might not like it at all. But it does give the option that when you set off and you start doing this, if you hire a worker, when it's full, what you can do then is just unload that, drop it on the floor behind you and hook another one on. So if you're running backwards and forwards with an IT run a trailer or an IT run a lorry, you can take the... But now, I know you can do it with regular trailers and that kind of thing. I know people are often saying, you know, there aren't enough trailers that hook up to forage harvesters. This kind of negates that need or that worry. And even if it's, you know, you still don't mind doing it that way, it's, like I say, it is something different. And that's what I really, really like about it. Incredibly well detailed. I mean, look at the... The detail is absolutely brilliant. I've gone for a satin finish. But there are quite a few different options on colours. 
it's a nice mod. Um, this is 41.52 megabytes and 44 slots on console. It's by ER Shabba VSR Modding Sir. So a bit heavy on the slot count. But then you've got that and a trailer bed, I suppose, all in one. And it is incredibly detailed with a load of options. This you'll find under vehicles, under forage harvesters. 280 grand though, which puts it way cheaper. Yeah, the, the Russell Mash is 305, so that's cheap. Let's be honest, not bad. 640 horsepower in its standard configuration. It comes like so. And we can change the design color, which changes the pipe. And some of the um, hydraulic stuff on the back. There's even, you know, you've got chrome copper. Or there's silver steel, metallic copper. There's a few different options anyway. Uh, main color, we've got the options of white, black, graphite green, satin green. There's a custom green. Again, there's a whole lot of options to go through. There's satins and graphites in whites and greens and blacks and all sorts. And then the same with rim color. We can do, no, not purchase. We've got a load of different options with regard to rim color as well. So if you want to go for more John Deere with yellow rims, you can. So have a play around with those. There's a load of options. We've got the option of Michelin and Mitus as the tire choices. Just those two. The Mitus is a little bit more low profile than the Michelin and the Michelin the wheel setup front wheels we can have front wheels broad or standard front wheels those are the two options under Mitus we've got front wheels and front wheels broad as well those are the two options we can have it no beacon two front beacons front beacons and one rear beacon front beacons and two rear beacons two rear beacons on their own back to no beacons then engine setup we've got the 8600 which is 640 horsepower We've got the 8700 at 760 horsepower and the 8800 at, is that 800 or 880? My eyesight's terrible, but it's up there. And then back again. Those are your options available. So what we'll do is hop in. Let's start it up. Pipe out. Listen to the horn. That's cool. Beacons, I think I went for all round, pretty sure I did. The beacons at the rear are underneath that back section just there. I did it all day. Lights, got a nice light, light array on that, excuse me. A voice going to an exhaust. Camera options, we've got in cab, which is nicely detailed. And then we've got this one, which I think is right by the rear hook, but you can't actually, you can't move the camera around. It's an interesting position to have it in. That's what we'll do. Let's back up. I need to put the hook out. Extend arm. Weird thing is it turns. It seems to turn the different direction to what I was expecting. But now it does get a bit of lean if you go into full extent of turn. So you need to be a little bit careful with that. So we'll hook up. Pick up the back. I've just gone for the, the Bergman one. I think it's a 48,000. There are all different backs and configurations of containers and stuff you can go for. So that hooks onto the back, and that's your unit, like that. Now front ones, we unless you go for, we do have the John Deere forage harvester, there's a couple of packs, aren't there? I've got a New Holland front end on this, it doesn't matter, you can go for any of them, they will work. Let's turn the beacons up, no, 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 I want to be on the front. Why is that not opening? There we go. This doesn't have an opening door or anything like that. Doors or windows. Oh, hang on. What's that one for? Oh, that's for the trailer back. I was thinking, hang on a minute. No, it does. Because I didn't have that on when I first tried it. So, yeah, it's an interesting... Those rear wheels steer as well. I don't know if you can see those. They're turning as I turn. You see them turning? They go into, like, crab mode. Let's say the other side as well. So when you turn, they're going to a crab mode. And then let's start it up. That's 
Oops, that is really cool. It looks amazing. Not too expensive. I know the slot count's high, the megabyte download is a bit high. But if anything, it is certainly different. There you go, look, I'm indicator going again. I always do that. It is certainly bringing something different to the game. I like that. There's no trailer hitch, so you can't bring another trailer along with it or anything like that. But very cool piece of kit. Really nicely detailed. That's the John Deere 8000 Container Carrier by ER Shabba BSR Modding. Sir, the new Precision Farming DLC dropped today as well. I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to get to that. That'll probably be tomorrow now. It's going to take a while to edit this and then hours for this to upload. Um, but I will do some stuff on the Precision Farming because there's a lot to it and there's a load more screens and new stuff to go with it but I'll try and get some videos up hopefully on that tomorrow that's it as far as I can tell for the mods for today I dare say we'll get a load of mods dropped very early again tomorrow because we seem to be getting in the mornings now I hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have give us a like if you haven't subscribed yet please do if you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.